fellow friends uh, we are going to discuss about inferential control and this we shall be discussing by taking an example and the example is that of a simple distillation column that is used to separate a mixture of pentane and hexane into the two products where the pentane comes out as distillate that is from the upper part of the column and hexane from the bottoms now here we have the control objective of maintaining 95% purity of pentane in spite of the changes in the feed composition so that is our objective and to achieve this objective we shall be normally you know have a tendency to use composition analyzer to measure the concentration of pentane in the distillate and use a simple feedback control to manipulate the reflux ratio so that we can keep the distillate at the required set point of 95% in pentane but the issue with this kind of simple feedback control is that normally we do not have the online gas chromatographs which are quick as well as accurate enough to get this kind of simple feedback control so in absence of the measured composition from the outlet what we go in is a special kind of control which we are going to discuss today and that is called inferential control and this inferential control makes use of secondary measurements like temperature and so on we shall be discussing subsequently to estimate the primary measurement in this case the primary measurement is the composition of the distillate so you can see here you have a figure and this figure is what we say is the normal case of simple feedback control with the assumption that you have a composition analyzer available which is quick enough to get the feedback from the distillate and that output goes to the controller not only it should be quick but it should be accurate enough so once the controller decides whether or not the composition is up to mark and accordingly the controller gives the command to open or close the reflux over here see if the accuracy of if the percentage of pentane coming out from here is not 95% then more part of reflux goes in and if the percentage of pentane is good enough we can afford to close this little bit of reflux and improve upon the yield of distillate so here the whole story is about this availability of composition analyzer so this composition analyzer is helping us to uh, go in for a kind of feedback control which we have been studying so far but what in case this composition analyzer is not in that case in case the composition analyzer is not available in that case we will like to go in for a special kind of control which is called inferential control and in this inferential control as you can see the output measurement which was not possible this unmeasured output is estimated by making some secondary measurements and we develop a kind of function and that function of secondary measurements is giving us the estimate of which is quite fairly good enough estimate of unmeasured outputs so you can see over here that the conventional uh, estimate which was available otherwise through composition analyzer is not available over here so what we do is we measure the various temperatures t1 t2 t3 etc from the different plates and we have a kind of estimator which estimates the composition of 
pentene over here and that is used as a set with the controller with the set point to control the reflux. So it is now very much clear that we are making use of this inferential control where the output is inferred from the secondary outputs. The secondary outputs are available but the primary output is not available or you can say the secondary measurements are available and we are able to estimate the unmeasured output we are able to infer it and that is why it is called inferential control. So this was a particular case of a distillation column. We will also see a generalized case. So this slide, it shows the general structure of inferential control configuration. Here we have in general any process with any number of manipulated variables which are used to overcome the effect of any number of disturbances from any number of measured outputs or in case these outputs are not measured in that case if these measured outputs are not available as such then we make use of an estimator and that estimator estimates these unmeasured controlled variables so those from the measured outputs, some of the outputs which are not directly available, they can be estimated. So these measured outputs are taken as the secondary outputs and we are estimating the feedback. So those kind of estimates of the unmeasured control variables are given to the controller and we have all the set points and the controller decides what manipulated variables are to be changed in any process. So this is a general structure of inferential control configurations. See that most of the times we have a model of the column and whatsoever is the estimator, this estimator heavily depends upon the model. If the model is not good, then the estimator again will not be able to give us good results. So we see as I have just mentioned over here that how good the model is that is going to determine how good the estimator is. But as the distillation column it works its process conditions keep on changing its model keeps on changing and so in case we are not able to come to a good amount of good, fairly good or fairly accurate model. What we will be doing is that we will be making use of some intermittent measurement. That is we have some kind of composition analyzer which is not fast enough. Maybe it is giving us results after every half an hour or after every one hour. So those results are compared with the estimated results and in case our estimator is not good enough then we have some kind of adaptation mechanism. So we will be using adaptive controls along with the inferential control to have a fairly good control where in, in case for some changes in the process conditions the model changes, the estimator is no longer accurate, the estimator also keeps on adapting itself as per its own changes in the process. So that in case the overhead composition is measured making use of gas chromatograph, we are going to actually check the effectiveness of inferential control and in case of any deviation we are going to make use of some adaptive mechanism to correct the estimator itself. So what is this adaptive mechanism? We shall be studying in the subsequent sessions. And even in this inferential control, how the inferential control estimator works, even this we are going to measure, even this we are going to study, we are going to make a model of it and we are going to go in for proper analysis in the next part of this video session on inferential control. In case you have any queries regarding inferential control, 
in case you have any observations you can communicate to me face to face through whatsapp through zoom or through any other means or we will be having some sessions online and you can share your doubts your observations till then i wish you a safe stay and i thank you for paying attention to this lecture i hope you have enjoyed it so keep on enjoying the learning process bye bye